Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm going to start today's show off with a remarkable story. Now, life at one time for my first guest this morning, Bill Neese, it was a complete nightmare. He had fallen to his bipolar mental condition, found himself addicted to alcohol, and from there he found himself homeless on the streets of Key West at one point. His friends, his family, they'd left him, they'd given up on him. He had nowhere to turn and no one at one point to turn to. Hopelessness was definitely taking over him. But before it was too late, something incredible happened to him. Bill's life was saved, and to this day, he's been able to save others. Bill, it's such a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and your story truly is so remarkable. I remember the first time that I heard it, so I'm so happy to have you here and be able to share it with us this morning. Now, Bill, I mentioned that you found yourself at one point totally addicted to alcohol and, and you were living on the streets of Key West, family, friends, they had given up on you. So I know you had to have feel, felt hopeless. Well, it wasn't that I felt hopeless, it's just that I felt lost. Mm -hmm. And the only way I could deal with it under the um, direction of my psychiatrist was to walk in the doors of AA. Mm -hmm. And that's where my healing process started. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel hopeless. I felt lost. You felt lost. Okay. Well, and you walked through those doors, and that's a big step for a lot of people to make. They don't want to take that step. They don't want to walk through those doors. It's hard. And you did walk through those doors, and it, it sounds like they were able to give you the encouragement you needed and the direction you needed to not feel lost anymore. Well, the most important thing to me is they gave me the tools. Mm -hmm. After The biggest thing that I know about most people is they can't cross the threshold in, into an AA room. They mm -hmm. can't do it. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I managed to do it because I was threatened with my own life. My psychiatrist told me if I didn't, I would die. Mm -hmm. And that's what allowed me to drop my pride and cross the threshold. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, then A, I listened and I paid attention and I used the tools that taught to me by the AA slogans and the AA meetings and the AA fellowship. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought me from zero mm -hmm. to something. Do you remember one of the slogans that really got you through some tough times? Expect a miracle. Mm -hmm. Expect a miracle. Well, so you would just say that to yourself over and over? And you did get that miracle. And then this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. There's several others, but the most important thing to me was expect a miracle. Mm -hmm. And it worked with mathematical accuracy. <laughs> I went from having nothing, nothing. I was managed to find one quarter a day to drink coffee. Mm -hmm. And at that time, if you bought one cup of coffee, you could drink it all day long. Mm -hmm. And so, and I never ran out of cigarettes <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> but um, through the miracles of expecting a miracle, one of my fellow AA man, uh, fellows gave me a job that paid me $40 for a day so I was no longer broke. And the next day another fellow AA member asked me to work for a day so I had uh, $80 in my pocket, mm -hmm. so I know well, I wasn't broke anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I, I believed in the miracles, mm -hmm. and they worked, mm -hmm. and they work with mathematical accuracy. Mm -hmm. Everything out of the big book, if, if you're familiar with AA, 
the big book is a guide to living. And if you follow the AA principles, then your life will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to be 100% committed to the principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, well that's what you did. And now, you were saying that you were able to get some steady money coming, so that was able to kind of help you survive for, for the days. But then you started getting some other jobs, Bill, that helped you start actually saving some money. Tell me about those jobs. Well, um, at that time, it was kind of a political thing. If you hired, if a company hired an indigent, mm -hmm. they got a tax credit. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a construction company in Stock Island that hired me for four dollars and fifty cents an hour, mm -hmm. which is only what a hundred dollars a week when it, you when you took away taxes. So that hundred dollars a week gave me the ability to buy one meal, one lunch, one one sandwich a day, one, mm -hmm. and save enough money to buy two packs of cigarettes a week. That was it. Mm -hmm. Nothing more. Caught the bus back and forth, you know, and so it let me survive. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I was going to meetings every day and making friends and mm -hmm. um, camaraderie and believing more and more and more into the AA principles. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one point, someone came up to me and said, how would you like to earn some extra money? And I said, sure. Well, I mean, well, it depends on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they said, well... There's a fellow that owns a couple of bars and restaurants on um, Front Street, and he lives in Big Pine, mm -hmm. and he wants somebody to go up to Big Pine, spend the day, and he'll bring him back. So I was a little bit skeptical at first. You know, is this a gay guy, or mm -hmm. what? <laughs> you know, is this a funny situation, or what? But I said, okay. So. He picked me up on the corner of Duval, and it went, I forget what it was. Anyway, it's on a corner intersection at 8 o'clock in the morning when he closed up. And he took me up to Big Pine, and he had a big, beautiful home. Mm -hmm. And his, his wife was very lovely, mm -hmm. and she came out. And he said, I'll see you later, buddy. I'm going to bed. Just do what she tells you to do. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, trim that tree. And, cut that grass and, mm -hmm. you know, she had me doing yard duty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he, eventually he got up, you know, it was about, I don't know, about supper time. And he said, come on, let's go. So I got into his big Cadillac. Mm -hmm. uh, he drove me back to Key West. And he said, um, how much do you want? And I said, well, whatever you say. So I handed me a $50 bill, and that's when my savings started. Yep. I was able to save $50 every week, mm -hmm. and I put it in my savings account. Mm -hmm. And all this time, I, I'm really getting engrossed into AA, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of politics going on in AA too, and I, didn't, I divorced myself from that. And one special thing that happened to me, I'm very special. We had a picnic mm -hmm. and I had been starving myself for so long. The picnic was free. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, wow, you know, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So I went to AA to the back, back mm -hmm. uh, yard and they were barbecuing hot dogs and hamburgers. And, mm -hmm. and so I got my fill of hamburgers and one, one of the places I had a break, my second break, a fellow by the name of Howard owned that company. He didn't run it. His manager ran it. His manager actually fired me when I went into my second break. Mm -hmm. But Howard showed up. And I looked. And they said, yeah, Howard, he's the main benefactor. I mean, he's bought everything here. He's a multimillionaire. And he supplied the anchors away with everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I managed to um, 
finagle my way around. And I said, Howard, I said, can I go back to work for you? He said, no, Bill, you can't. And I said, well, I've been going to AA now for a couple of months. He said, no, you can't go back to work for me. But let me tell you something. If you follow the AA principle, you will be more successful then you have a tree. And he was right. Mm -hmm. He was so right, wasn't he? Because you did become more successful than you'd ever dreamed. And when we take a break right now, you're going to share how you did that and became more successful. You got that miracle, Bill. Stay with us. There's much more to come this morning. <laughs>